Hello and welcome to Metsmerizing.com. The topics that we'll study today are So, without further ado, let's begin. Today we'll study transformations of a graph. So we'll take a basic graph, we'll apply the transformations and from that we'll get stunning and more complex graphs. So we'll start with our first transformation. Our first transformation is shifting along x-axis. Suppose I'm given the graph of y equals fx and now I want to draw the graph of fx plus a. So what I've done is I've simply changed this x to x plus a. So in order to draw this graph, all I need to do is shift the entire graph minus a units along x-axis. So I'll just move the graph horizontally. So I'll take up an example. Say for example, suppose I have to draw the graph of y equals mod of x plus 2. Now what's my basic graph? Basic graph here is y equals mod of x. So I'll draw the graph of mod x. For mod of x plus 2, I'll shift the entire graph minus 2 units along x-axis. So that's the graph of y equals mod of x plus 2. Now say for example, I have to draw the graph of y equals mod of x minus 1. So now again, I'll take the graph of mod x and then I'll shift the entire graph plus one units along x-axis. Suppose I need to draw the graph of y equals two x minus three whole square. So what's my basic graph here? The basic graph here is y equals two x square, which is a parabola of the third form. It is parabola opening upwards, vertex at zero. Now for x minus three, I'll shift the entire graph plus three units along x-axis. So now that's the graph of y equals two x minus three whole square. I'll take another one. I have to draw the graph of y equals fractional part of x plus one by two. So my basic graph is fraction part one. Now for fraction part of x plus one by two, I'll need to shift the entire graph minus one by two units along x-axis. So now that's the graph of y equals fractional part of x plus one by two. Now our second transformation is shifting along y-axis. So suppose I'm given the graph of y equals fx and I have to draw the graph of y plus b equals fx. Then all I need to do is I need to shift the entire graph minus b units along y-axis. So I'll just have to move the graph vertically. Now suppose I want to draw the graph of y plus 2 equals 3x square. Now, what's my basic graph here? My basic graph is y equals 3x square. y equals to 3x square is basically a parabola opening upwards, vertex at origin. Now, for y plus 2, I'll shift the entire graph minus 2 units along y-axis. So, I'll take up this graph. I'll shift the graph minus two units along y-axis. So now, previously the vertex was at origin. Now this vertex has shifted to zero comma minus two. Suppose I want to draw the graph of y equals one plus cos x. Now the first thing that I need to know here is, it's not a transformation of x, it's a transformation of y. Basically I can write it as y minus one equals cos x. So my basic graph here is y equals to cos x. Now I need to draw the graph of y plus one equals cos x. So what I'll do is I'll shift the entire graph plus one units along y-axis. So previously this graph was between minus one and plus one. Now it will lie between zero and two. So I'll shift the entire graph plus one units along y-axis. So that is the graph of y equals one plus cos x. Now this third transformation is basically a combination of first two transformations. So from y equals to fx, we need to draw the graph of y plus b equals fx plus a. Say for example, suppose I have to draw the graph of y equals one plus mod of x minus two. So basically I can also write it as y minus one equals mod of 
x minus 2. So my basic graph is y equals mod x. Now here I need to transform the graph so that x becomes x minus 2 and y becomes y minus 1. So I'll take the entire graph plus 2 units along x axis and plus 1 unit along y axis. So either I can take both the transformations simultaneously or I can go sequentially. Say for example from mod x I'll go to mod of x minus 2. So first I'll shift the graph horizontally. So suppose I've shifted this graph plus 2 units along x axis. Now for this graph shift this graph plus 1 units along y axis. So now I'll move this graph upwards along y axis. Now let us take another example. So basically it's a rational function. Now what I can do is I can write this as x plus 1 minus 3 upon x plus 1 or y equals 1 minus 3 upon x plus 1. So y minus 1 equals minus 3 x plus 1. Here I can identify my basic graph. So if I take this as y and if I take it as x. So my basic graph here is x y equals minus 3. Now x y is equal to minus 3 is a rectangle or hyperbola of the second form. Now from this graph, I'll first draw the graph of y equals minus 3 upon x plus 1. So it's a transformation of x. So I'll shift the entire graph minus 1 units along x axis. So previously the asymptote which was at 0, now this asymptote will be at minus 1. So if I'll draw this graph, so I'll draw this asymptote and now that's the graph of y equals minus 3 upon x plus 1. Now from this graph, I'll draw the graph of y minus 1 equals minus 3 x plus 1. So for this graph, I'll just need to shift the entire graph plus 1 units along y axis. So that's the graph of y equals x minus 2 upon x plus 1. Now we'll move on to our fourth transformation. And the fourth transformation is from the graph of y equals to fx, I need to draw the graph of y equals minus fx. So one way of doing it is rotate the entire graph 180 degrees along x-axis. Say for example, suppose I know how to draw the graph of y equals to sine x and from y equals to sine x, I want to draw the graph of y equals minus sine x. So from sine x, if I have to draw the graph of minus sine x, so if I'm going to rotate the graph 180 degrees along x-axis, so I'll end up getting this graph. So that's the graph of minus sine x. Another way of doing it can be, so I can take a two-way mirror and I'll place it on x-axis. So if I take a two-way mirror and if I place it on x-axis, I'll take the reflection of this graph about this mirror. So that's the graph of y equals minus sine x. I'll take another example. Say for example, I have to draw the graph of y equals minus mod x. So that's my mod x function. Now, if I place a two-way mirror, so if I take the reflection, I'll get this reflection. So that is the graph of y equals minus mod x. Graph of f minus x. So here I've replaced this x with minus x. Now, how do we do that? Now for this, I need to rotate the entire graph of 180 degrees along y axis. So previously the value which was at plus 1, now it will be at minus 1 and the value at minus 1 will be at plus 1. So clearly I need to rotate the entire graph 180 degrees along y axis. Say for example, suppose I have to draw the graph of y equals greater square function of minus x. So my basic graph is y equals greater square function of x. I will rotate this graph 180 degrees about y axis. So if I rotate it about y axis, so the graph I'll get is, the other way of doing it can be, I can place a two-way mirror and then I can start taking the reflection of left on right and right on left. So if I take the reflection of right, I'll get, and if I take the reflection of left, I'll get this way. I can rotate the entire graph 180 degrees about y-axis or I can place a two-way mirror on y-axis and then I can reflect the entire graph. Now I'll take up another example. Say for example, I need to draw the graph of y equals minus of under root of minus x. So my basic graph here is 
y equals under root of x. Now first I will draw the graph of y equals under root of minus x. Now for under root of minus x, take a mirror on y axis and take the reflection of right on left and left on right. So if I take the reflection, I will get this graph. So that is the graph of y equals under root of minus x. Now for y equals minus under root of minus x, now I will place a mirror on x axis and I will take the reflection of down on up and up on down. So if I take the reflection, I will get this graph. So that is the graph of y equals minus under root of minus x. So we will move on to our sixth transformation and this transformation is from the graph of y equals to fx, we need to draw the graph of y equals afx when a is a positive number. So say for example, from the graph of y equals sine x, I need to draw the graph of y equals 2 sine x. Now depending on the value of this a, we have to either stretch or shrink the graph in vertical direction. This is the graph of sine x. Now for 2 sine x, I need to stretch the graph along y axis. So previously its amplitude is between minus 1 and plus 1. Now it will be between minus 2 and plus 2. So basic shape will remain the same, only its amplitude is going to change. So we have stretched the graph along y axis. Suppose I have the graph of y is equal to x square and from that I need to draw the graph of y equals 2x square. So for y is equal to 2x square, again I am going to stretch the graph upwards. If I am going to stretch the graph upwards, I will get this graph. So that is the graph of y equals 2x square. Now what about y equals 1 by 2x square? Now for y equals to 1 by 2x square, I need to shrink the graph. So if I will shrink the graph along y-axis, so I will end up getting this graph. So basically from the graph of y to x square, I can draw the graph of y equals to 2x square and I can also draw the graph of y equals 1 by 2x square. So for 2x square, I will stretch the graph and for 1 by 2x square, I will shrink the graph. Now seventh transformation is from the graph of y to fx, we need to draw the graph of y equals f a x. Here again, I have taken a as a positive number. So here too, I need to stretch or shrink the graph along x axis. Now say for example, from the graph of y equals sin x, I have to draw the graph of y equals sin 2x. So I'll draw the graph of sin x. So for sin 2x, I'll shrink the graph along x axis. So previously period of this function was 2 pi. Now the period of this function is pi. Now for trigonometric functions or for any function the simplest way of doing this transformation can be so if from the graph of y to fx you have to draw the graph of y to f ax then divide each and every value with a. So from the graph of sin x, if I have to draw the graph of sin 2x, so what I will simply do is, I will divide all the values with 2. So basically, I will get the same graph, little bit zoomed out. That's it. Suppose I have to draw the graph of y equals fractional part of x by 2. So I will draw the graph of fractional part of x. And since it is 1 by 2, so I will multiply every value with 2. So this is 2, this is 4, this is minus 2 and then it will be plus 4. So that is the graph of y equals fractional part of x by 2 and the fundamental period of fractional part of x by 2 is 2 units.